But we can use potential difference to reason it out in terms of what happens to the, the average electric field. If we were to kind of smear it all over and just look at an average, what's going on with the average electric field inside? And here's how it works. Let's just look at this polarized slab. If I were to kind of just isolate the polarized slab and think of, okay, we got all these induced dipoles. Uh, the applied field is making positively charged dipoles on the right, negatively charged dipoles on the left. So if I were looking at the electric field, and I, and I just want to say the electric field due to these dipoles alone, at a location here, those dipoles would make an electric field pointing in what direction? To the right, okay. So this is E due to the dipoles, right? And over here, the electric field due to the dipoles would be pointing uh, that way, to the left? To the right, yeah, because the negative sides are closer over here, right? So the, just think about what would happen with not one dipole, right? If you had one dipole, We've seen this. E points that way. E points that way. And then what does E, how does E point down here? To, yeah, to the left. So I can just sort of do that in mass. And I can see that this is going to be the pattern of electric field just due to those dipoles. We still have the electric field due to the capacitor, but I'm just looking at the field due to the dipoles. I'm going to choose a path to, to calculate a potential difference. It's going to start over on the right. It's going to go underneath all the, the, underneath the plastic slab, underneath all the dipoles, over to the left, and then straight through uh, back to where I started from. Okay? If I go round trip, if I go delta V round trip, and my path ends up where it starts, what should I get for delta V? So you get zero, okay? And this is an important property to, to know, okay? It comes from the idea of path independence, where we said the path doesn't matter going from A to B. So if you go from A to B along any path, you get some potential difference. Go back from B to A, you get the same, but op, uh, same magnitude but opposite sign of potential difference. Round trip potential difference is going to give you zero, okay? Well, let's look at the signs of the potential difference along some parts of these paths. And let me, uh, let me do this with a little program here. Let me get some dipoles. So, so in this program, you can just kind of drag a, a positive charge here and a negative charge here, and then click and show the electric fields due to these charges, etc. And let me uh, do an example I already have written up. Let's get sources and get the dipoles. So there's a bunch of dipoles, okay? The negatives are, they're blue and the positives are red, okay? So let's uh, calculate the electric field at some places. There, there, there. Hey, what's going on? There we go. That's better. Okay, so it's doing the typical dipole pattern, right? Pointing away, pointing towards, curling around. Let me think about the potential difference. If I am, if I start here and go to here in the direction of the electric field, the potential difference along that part should be what? Positive or negative? Should be negative. Okay. So if I, all right, let me, I'll have to, do, I have to do it all in one sweep. So let's talk about it as, as we go along. I start here. I go around this semicircle over to here. Okay. So here's my starting point. That's my ending point. What sign of potential difference would you get? You start off with a, a path that's pointing downward, right? And it's kind of perpendicular to that electric field, so that should give you about zero. But notice as you're moving along this path, how does the electric field point? It's always going to have a component that is more or less in the direction of your path, right? Can everybody see that? Like You can especially see it right here. I mean, I'm going basically in that direction. And here as well, I'm kind of going up. Then it starts to get more and more perpendicular, so it doesn't quite contribute as much. But overall, if I add the whole thing up, I should get negative, right? And then I go from here to here. 
That should give me what? Negative, because I'm going again in the direction of the electric field. If the round trip potential difference gives me zero, what should I get when I go through the interior? Should get a positive. Let's try it out. So I start here. Okay, it's giving me negative, I don't know if you can read it, negative 11, 12.0 uh, volts. And the blue indicates a negative potential difference. Red indicates a positive. Looks pretty blue. And my path is kind of shaky, but that's okay. It looks pretty blue. And it's all blue so far. And then... Then it starts to get messy. Then it kind of goes a little bit blue, but then it gets really red again. And things are just going crazy. And then we go back. Okay, so it doesn't quite go to zero. It says negative 0.2, uh, but that's due to round off error in the calculation. But you can see the colors in here, right? I mean, there's a lot of red fuzziness indicating a pretty large positive potential difference inside, okay? You saw how the field was kind of going nuts in terms of the direction. But overall, you're getting a... Uh, positive potential difference just due to that uh, the field of the dipoles, just due to the field of the dipoles inside. So that says, what's that tell us? If we're going in the direction of the field of those dipoles, so here's the dipoles. If I went in that direction, if that was my delta L, and I got a positive overall, then the average electric field just due to the dipoles has got to be pointing in what direction? It's got to be pointing to the left. Okay. So that's the electric field due to the dipoles. All right. So that's the basic argument. We use this potential difference to ter determine how this field must point. But it's still inside the capacitor. So here's our capacitor again. This was negative, and this was positive. We still have an electric field due to the capacitor pointing in that direction. But is E dipoles, E of the dipoles, equal to E of the capacitor? You think that's going to be true? Probably not, right? In a metal, it was. In a metal, you have sort of the perfect amount of polarization to cause this electric field to cancel out. The dipole electric field isn't large enough to cancel the, the uh, field of the capacitor out, but it does reduce it. Note, and so the net electric field we get is something smaller, but still pointing in the same direction. So if I draw the plastic now, I have E net inside, which is smaller. I have E in the air gaps, which should be approximately what? field in the air gaps change much? Did it change much for the case of the metal? No, so it's probably not going to change much for the case of the plastic, right? Because there's even less polarization going on. So we have the original E of the capacitor here. We have the original E of the capacitor here. And we have a reduced E net inside, or average E net inside. There's actually a relationship, experimental relationship, or empirical relationship, that tells us how much that E net is, and that E net inside is equal to the electric field, and I'll call it the applied electric field, which is the field due to the capacitor in this case, divided by a constant K. This capital K is called the dielectric constant. And it's a property of a material. Okay, so it's, it's a material property. And for most ordinary materials, sort of well-behaved materials, there are lots of exceptions to this, but K is typically greater than or equal to 1, okay? So if I have a number greater than 1, I'm dividing by a number greater than 1, my electric field has gone down. It's less than the original applied field, okay? Uh, examples of this, this uh, value. I think I have some examples here. Uh, K. K for air 
Well, K for a vacuum, by definition, has got to be just one because the field isn't affected by anything. K for air, air just slightly affects this applied electric field. It's 1.00054, something like that. Uh, for a typical plastic, it's somewhere between 2 and 3, okay, approximately. Uh, paper, it's something like 3.5. Glass, it's approximately 5. So these are just giving you the values of how much the field is affected. Okay, a bigger dielectric constant means uh, more polarization inside, meaning a greater reduction in that overall uh, electric field. Okay. Okay. So this is kind of a long chain of reasoning. We use a lot of stuff here, but we've worked out that the potential difference should be reduced, not as much, but if we knew the di as a, not as much as a conductor, but if we know that um, dielectric constant, we should be able to calculate it. So let's see if we could do that. 